Welcome everyone. My name is Joel and I'll be your conference operator for today's national web conference titled Surgical vs. Non-Surgical Modifiers. Avoid the mayhem and denials. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session and instructions on how to participate will follow at that time. As a reminder, this call is being recorded and will make, be made available for purchase on audio CD and electronic transcript. This audio conference has been CEU approved by the American Academy of Professional Coders. At the end of today's event, you will hear a CEU index number. You will need this index number to report your CEU to the AAPC. Please remember to stay on the line and have your pen and paper ready. I would like now to introduce your speaker for today, Becky Zelmer, CPC, CBCS, MBS. Becky Zelmer has 16 years experience in coding, billing, auditing, reimbursement, and collections. She has a diverse background, having performed duties in medical offices from patient care to collections. She's, she has had the pleasure of auditing and educating physicians nationally. She is currently employed at CVA Healthcare Services as a medical billing and coding supervisor. Ms. Elmer, welcome to the program. We are now ready to begin. Thank you, Joel. Well, good afternoon, good morning, or happy lunch hour, wherever you're located. I'm in Wisconsin, so it would be noon here, and it's hot. So we have a lot to go over today. Um, the information that I'm going to give you is just packed full of how to use modifiers, correct usage of modifiers, um, and there's a lot of information in here, so I want to get started right away. Um, first, let's talk about why we use modifiers. We use modifiers um, to explain to payers and insurance companies that the description of the code um, is the same as what is in the, the code descriptor, but something about the procedure or the service was changed. Some of the modifiers that we use can impact payment. Um, and the accuracy of payment, which is another thing that we will discuss um, as we go along. With some modifiers, you may be asked to provide additional documentation. Um, this would be leading to a, a cursory review to make sure that everything um, that you have reported is correct. There are some pairs that recognize certain modifiers and some that don't. There are also some pairs that have their own modifiers per se, and this information can all be found in your contracts with those specific carriers. Missing or incorrect usage of modifiers um, is the most common reason why claims are rejected or why claims are paid inaccurately or inappropriately. So we will start off today with surgical modifiers. And these get appended to any surgical procedure in your CPT book. So um, this does not go towards um, evaluation and management services, anything that is surgical. And it indicates that the service was performed within the global period. They can be used to indicate a procedure was modified or was more difficult than what the description reads in the CPT book. And this also assures proper payment for services rendered. There is one thing um, that I want to bring to your attention with CMS Medicare carriers. If you append a surgical modifier um, to a, a CPT code, the best thing to do is um, to put in box 19 of the HICSA form or the electronic equivalent, whichever if you're doing electronic billing is documentation available upon request. And the reason that I say this is that you can then, instead of receiving a denial, you will receive a request from CMS, Medicare, or your local carrier for that additional documentation. It takes one step away in the appeals process when you're trying to get paid on that procedure. The first one we'll talk about is modifier 22, which is increased procedural services. And this is used when the work required 
<clears throat> to provide the service or complete the surgery is substantially greater than typically required. Um, one of the big things that I see with this is um, patients that are overweight or morbid obesity. And with that, one recommendation would be to provide the BMI within the operative note and also explain the extra work. How much extra work did you have to do to get through it? <clears throat> All that extra layering <clears throat> that those morbid obese or overweight patients have. Um, trauma is another one where it is, there's trauma, let's say, to the face, but there's also a, a cervical disc that is fractured. That, when you're doing that surgery on that face, that surgical disc, you can injure it more. Um, the same holds true in the opposite way. If you're doing the surgical um, disc on the cervical disc, then the facial trauma can interfere with um, fixing the neck injury. Um, significant scarring that requires extra work and time, <clears throat> and increased time resulting from extra work by the physician. The increased time is really hard because our surgical procedures per CPT don't really have time associated to them. So what you can do is um, if you say you know, an appendectomy normally takes 22 minutes to do a laparoscopic appendectomy. And because of this patient's morbid obesity and their BMI was 40, um, it took you 45 minutes to do this. That's, it's hard to put a time limit on a procedure. So be very careful with that one. It, it, the note definitely needs to, to support modifier 22 usage. Usually, if you send a letter along explaining the difficulty and um, medical records, that can support the use of the modifier 22. And usually when you attach a 22 modifier, it spurs an automatic manual review. So it, the payer is going to request records um, from you no matter what you do. Medicare, and there are a couple of other payers out there that do not pay any additional money um, if you put a 22 modifier on it. I would say straight across the board, it's, it's good to put it on, but you're not going to get anything additional from CMS. And the one thing I wanted to mention about this one, incorrect usage, 